So, welcome to, I think, part number eight of recovering my uh, link from my PESA. And uh, so I'm back in the hangar, obviously. Um, the painting is done with the ring. So, today I hope I can finish up the landing uh, uh, area over there. And also, uh, I want to drop the tank back in. So, and then I'm pretty close of actually mounting the ring back on the on my airplane. Well, as I mentioned that in the last video, I have to do a little touch up uh, around the, uh, the stripes uh, where I had bleeding of the um, uh, paint. But uh, I'm getting ready to hang the uh, uh, ring back on the, on the airplane. So I prepared the tank bay. Uh, for the tank to go back in, um, put all new felt here and of course on the bottom strap. There's also a Univer part number for felt that goes on the rib here. Um, I, I don't know why uh, because I wouldn't think it would touch but since uh, there was a part number I did glue that in uh, and then also here on this uh, parts here are the um, uh, tank straps go on to. Um, you put the felt on and then this after the tank is in this tube uh, goes all the way across and in the wing here there's uh, it attaches um, I tried earlier and I probably have enough room to actually while the tank is in to get in with my hands through the rib uh, but we will see otherwise I have to cut there's an inspection hole on the bottom I may have to cut it open and uh, uh, do it from the bottom and the the sequence uh, when you when when you're gonna see later when I drop the tank in, um, so at first you leave this out and then after the tank is in, you can actually get this uh, uh, rod um, through the tank and uh, over to the other side. So uh, let's see how it goes. Well, after the fuel tank is uh, back in, so now um, I installed the flap um, because uh, so I put the flap on here, uh, just temporarily, of course. Uh, so, but I can move it up and down, and I put some uh, masking tape down here put, to protect the paint because now I have to install the the seal. There's a, a flap seal that goes on here. Um, this is the piece that I took off the pacer. I'll just lay down for a second. Um, so this is the piece that I took off. And uh, I didn't bother about trying to even paint it or get it ready for paint because it's in pretty sad condition. Um, here the end is uh, all split. Um, and I don't know how many times somebody had already drilled into it um, so I didn't uh, I don't want to use it again so we put that aside and I purchased from Univer I purchased a new piece uh, it wasn't even that expensive um, definitely not worth uh, messing with the old one and it comes already pre-cut with the notch for the uh, for the flap actuator rod um, but the radius uh, does not fit uh, to, to mount, uh, I'm talking about this radius here. So I've already started bending this just by hand, so I have to find of, uh, fit this um, so that I can drill the holes and uh, get it ready then for paint. Uh, that is the reason why I put masking tape down here, because I looked at the other wing and the, the edge the top edge of the um, this piece here sits one inch 
in from the trailing edge of the false spar. So I drew a one inch line here, um, so I can line it up and get it fit. So let's uh, get it done. So after a lot of little bending to get the radius right, um, here's my one inch line and here it's on the other end and the piece fits just fine with uh, really no pressure pushing back. Um, so I think at this point it's ready for paint. I will drill the holes after the flap is uh, actually uh, covered and painted because um, that will be the final fit because um, I wanted then uh, again I mount the flap uh, maybe drill the top holes just getting in position and then I want just about a little space here um, maybe I put a thin piece of cardboard then to make sure that the flap moves as freely as it does now there's no right now it falls of course it's touched because it's not uh, really final mounted but uh, when it's done I want the, just a little gap there the size of a cardboard so that the flap moves without touching but the gap as little as possible to get the, the best efficiency out of the uh, the gap seal because that's what the gap seal is all about um, so Turn the camera, I just noticed the uh, shooting right into the light, but anyhow, so um, so that there's just a little gap, maybe the thickness of a cardboard, so when the flap moves up and down, doesn't touch, but I get maximum efficiency. Um, but that is how it looks, so I'm pretty happy with the fit, so I can move to, on to the next thing. So now it's time to uh, actually uh, put the holes in for the uh, drain. Uh, the drain holes, uh, when I covered the wing, I put these washers underneath. Uh, they are, I mean, you can you buy them when you buy all the material that you need for fabric covering and they go on the fabric. Uh, you can see that in one of the earlier videos. So now, of course, it's time to open up the holes. So. When the, if there's water getting into the wing, so the water can get out uh, and doesn't sit in the wing. So I did two already here. Um, so I'm just gonna show one right here. So I use this needle that I have uh, and you just find the center of the uh, washer, which you can feel actually, and then just punch a nice hole into it. Just push a needle into it and twisting and turning it. And push it all the way in. It's actually amazing. Uh, I mean, this two layers of uh, fabric I have to go through and paint of course but it's pretty strong but there you have it and you have a nice hole for the water to come out so tomorrow morning uh, some friends will come over and uh, we will put the wing back on the airplane because um, I need the wing on the airplane now because uh, I have to finish the rest of the metal parts which is the tank cover um, the fairings around the struts, uh, the small, all the small pieces. But then also, uh, these are the uh, wing root fairings, and uh, they have been patched um, already a couple of times. Like this is the one that actually goes on 
the top of the wing. Um, so it was at one point somebody put an antenna in, uh, so it had been patched and so many times they had been drilled and uh, little cracks in it. So I made all new pieces. Uh, this is the new piece uh, to replace uh, the one on the top. Um, and for instance, this is the one of the pieces that goes on the bottom uh, from the actually the, from the leading edge uh, of the wing. And here again, uh, it's pretty pretty bad looking. There's already you can see in the camera, but it's cracked here, cracked here. So um, I made a new piece like this, uh, and I put a nice lip onto it here, which will be sitting then against the the fuselage, so a nice radius, uh, so we'll seal, it, seal up against the fuselage. Um, and this is the piece that goes at the trailing edge of the wing, um, which was cracked and I put this patch on a couple of years ago because it was cracked and I could take, couldn't get the tension on the top of the uh, wing piece anymore. Uh, and again also pretty sad looking. Uh, I do have to drill out these little things here, um, the tensioners, uh, and I have to transfer them to the new piece. Um, so this is going to be the new piece here. Um, I haven't bent it yet because at first I want to rivet the, this piece onto it and then I bend it over. Um, so, you know, this was also on my list to do. Um, so this is going to be next thing right after the wing is back on um, so that I can do the final fit of these pieces uh, and I have to of course find the holes that are in the right way uh, and transfer them over to these pieces so this is going to be the, the first task after the wing is back on So everyone just left um, and my airplane finally looks like an airplane again, um, at least from this angle. Uh, the flap and aileron are still missing and of course um, a lot of metal parts are still missing but uh, now I'm really liking it even more. Um, all the little paint imperfections that I was staring at every time I looked so closely at the wing now becoming less obvious because uh, now it's part of a, the whole airplane. but. Uh, I'm really glad how it worked out. Um, so, but again, there's still a lot of work I need to do. Um, mainly now, next thing is getting the wing root fairings done. Um, and of course, I have to still put uh, the nuts on all the bolts uh, for the wing. But uh, in the time lapse, you can see that we first uh, put the uh, bolts on here on the wing root. And uh, one thing we did is um, uh, the few lines are really hard to connect after the wing is on because you only have this much space to work in. So um, we had enough help. So while we move the wing in, we actually put the few lines on. So this is for the main tank, the rear outlet. And then I, of course, have an extra um, shoe line here, this one here, um, that is for the auxiliary tank and then this is for the main tank, the, the front outlet. So we actually connected them while we moved the wing in, which makes it so much easier um, to do that uh, versus trying to get them on after the wing is on. So after the fuel lines were on and the wing was in position, uh, we put the bolts in, in the uh, spars at the, at the root here, at the fuselage. Then next, uh, we took the front spar 
and put the bolts in the uh, in the front spar, put the bolt in, next the rear spar and then last but not least well, you put the two bolts in at the bottom of the uh, the struts so and that was it it was actually not really difficult to do it was uh, fairly easy uh, if you have enough help uh, we were a total of six um, then also now you can really see the nice inspection covers that I did um, here so I need to finish that all up but it's coming together so today is uh, the 3rd of July and I'm trying to make it to Oshkosh the end of the month so I hope I can do it but everything looks good so far let's do a quick walk around Oh, but looks like an airplane again. So let's get going and start working on uh, flapping aileron and the rest of the metal parts. <laughs> 